Hello and welcome back to the channel. This week's video is about a subject that I'm quite fond of. Um, I think it's essential in shrimp keeping, specifically caridina, but I also use this method for neo caridina, and that's RO water or RODI water. So first thing I want to talk about is what is RO and what does it stand for? So RO stands for reverse osmosis and the process of reverse osmosis is forcing water at pressure over a semi-permeable membrane and to put it simply what it does it takes out all the impurities or 99% of the impurities. They often come as a kit that you can just connect to an outdoor tap. You do need water pressure if you're on sort of a header tank system in your property then you may need a pump to sort of create that pressure i'm lucky my my mains pressure is good and my circuit in the house it isn't on a header tank it's on mains pressure so i'm quite lucky there ro units typically typically so a three stage ro would typically co typically come with a pre-sediment filter so as your membrane doesn't clog it will take out all the <coughs> impurities in the water sands and fine particles the second stage would usually be a carbon block or, or a carbon filter coconut carbon juice quite a bit and the idea of that is to take out any chemical impurities or as much as it can and then the third part of that is the actual unit itself and you've pretty much got an in and an out and a waste so there's three pipes that would come out of that the in is obviously your your water in and then the out goes to drain or you can collect that and use that for other other things such as water in the garden etc water in plants and the final part of that goes to a receptacle of some description so i use a hundred litre sort of garden water bus with a tap on the bottom i'm quickly getting to the point where i need a bigger storage um, I do have mine outside at the moment. I am looking to bring that whole thing inside if I can find room for a storage tank where it's sort of usable for me. Um, the other thing about bringing it indoors is if you leave them outside in the winter, below four degrees, they're less likely to work. You can create problems with the membrane. And obviously when they freeze, the, the housings crack because the water expands. A four-stage unit then, which is where we're start starting to get into RODI, is where after the water comes out of the membrane, it's polished, and it's polished, polished using uh, deionizing resin. So what that will do, I'm not 100% on this, but what it does, it takes out all the positive ions and thus removes more impurities from the water and ideally what you what you're aiming for is to get as close to zero total dissolved solids in that water as possible my own unit is a 75 gallon per day that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to produce 75 gallon a day there's a lot of parameters in that you know uh, how bad your water is what your water pressure is and stuff like that and what i've done i bought a four stage so mine's got the the pre-sediment filter the carbon block the ro membrane itself and then on the good water side of that it's then connected to a deionizing resin chamber and then to my receptacle what I've done is I've added an additional deionizing resin compartment. So mine goes through, you know, two stages of deionizing resin. And you can add more and more and more if you want to. What I'm using at the moment, but I don't always use, is a color changing deionizing resin. So you can actually see when it needs changing. The first time I used them, I bought a very cheap one. Um, it worked, it was perfect, um, but it just didn't give me the, the gallons per day or the, the volume per day that I needed. So I upgraded to a 10 inch filter. You can get 20 inch or you can get sort of compact ones. The GPD gallons per day varies. I think the lowest is 50. I'm not sure what the highest is. I think they go to 150. And obviously if you need more than that, you, you've got you know it, i don't know if they go higher but if they don't and you need more than 150 gpd then what gallons per day what you would do is you would have to run it and two sets of receptacles and that would obviously give you double double the output so um ideally in prime conditions your ro membrane should last 12 months to two years and then they need changing but the 
pretty much open, you put a new one in and you run it. Your carbon block and your pre-sediment filter, again, will deter be determined on how often you change that by your water quality out of the tap. I, I'm in Tamworth Staffs, so we've got quite hard water. Um, I haven't got one to show you, but the first time I changed my pre-sediment filter, I left it for a year, and when I put it on the top of the bin to drain before I put it in the bin, it left like a slime coat with really fine silicates or sands, you know, horrendous. You know, I looked at it and think we, we actually drink that water. So massive fan. Um, it's a must for Caradina. It's a must for Marine. And I'm an advocate, as you're probably aware if you watch the channel, of using that for Neo Caradina as well, simply because if I'm using tap water, I don't know what's in that tap water. Yes, your your water company will probably put a breakdown or you know an average breakdown of the contents of the water, um, which are quite detailed, but they fluctuate. You know, so if there's a problem somewhere, those water parameters can change, and you, they don't notify you of that. So, so for me, I'd prefer to take out as much of the nastiness as possible and put my own minerals back into that. So there's a couple of products on the market. I'll go through those a bit later. The same mine is outside. It's in the front garden. It's connected to a tap. I have ordered new filters. So I'm going to change the pre-sediment, the carbon block, and the deionizing resin chambers. And I'll get that on film for you guys and sort of show you how I do that. Massively huge OCD. So I'm not happy to empty out the resin. I'll need to wash out that container and clean it and everything because, well, just 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 my OCD. But uh, we'll have a look at that. I think these ones have been in about four months, five months, and they do need a change. And what's told me they need a change is my TDS coming out of the RO unit um, has gone from sort of gradually from zero to one to three and when i tested the other day it's at seven so it's still okay to use i'm still using it but to me it's telling me that something needs changing well the membrane probably doesn't but the resins do and looking at the color change on them they, they started off black they're sort of a, a, a gray not a gray like a beige brownish color you'll see when i when i have a look and um I, for me I, they just need changing the fact that i'm changing the resins I need to change the pre-filter and the carbon as well, just just by sort of default. The resin's not cheap. Um, the pre-filter and carbon are. I'm going to shout out, this video isn't sponsored, but I'm going to shout out Finest Filters, who also run Finest Aquatics. It's the same company, and I've been using them for ages. I buy all my, um, I've got one here actually, I buy all my fixtures and fittings because I've used reverse osmosis tubing to set up the top-up systems for my tank. I've only got one, so it's a little elbow there that the RO pushes into and cl clock clicks in. And then you put, I don't know if you can see that, but you put a little locker on, on where that bit comes out and it sort of locks it all in place. So they're, they're reasonably priced, pretty cheap in my opinion. I think they're the best on the market. The service is great. They use Amazon shipping, so you get two-day free shipping on all products. And I say I buy a lot of them, I buy a lot of fittings, I buy a lot of taps, I buy, you know, absolutely stacks of stuff. And I always go to them for my filters and my reverse osmosis filters. Um, that's not true, actually. The first unit I bought was a 50 gallon per day from a company called Viair. I think they're based in Leicestershire, which which were fine. That you know, it, it did what it needed to do for me, but it, it, I needed something that sort of pumped out a little bit bigger. But uh, what we'll do, I'll, I'll, it's a bit of a mess out there, but excuse the mess. I'll go over where we're currently at and show you sort of the, um, the setup there and talk through that. And then what I'll do is later in the week, they should be here Monday or Tuesday, I'll sort of do a bit of video of me changing out the filters and flushing the system and getting that going but uh rodi so ro reverse osmosis di deionizing and put together you've got a roadie unit you know but um i'll go through that i'll go through my setup i'll go through how i mix what i use and the various salts and minerals that i use to add back and how i sort of top up my tanks now and how i'm 
planning to top up in the future. So I'll pause that for now. I'll do another bit of video. We'll get it all spliced together and I'll speak to you shortly. So this is my RO unit. I had an additional outside tap fitted. Um, it connects to the RO, goes round the back, into the unit. And then what it does, it will go through this pre-sediment filter first, and you can see that's got a lot of algae. I do need to cover this really, but they are um, they are sort of covered by wheelie bins, but we've got a bit up of algae. It will then go through the second phase, which is a carbon block. It goes from there then up, and up to this filter. So this is the RO membrane, and then it will come out of the RO membrane it will go the, the the red my red goes to waste so i've used red there it literally just goes to drain at the moment but it will then go through that color change in resin so you can see that's changing color and then it will come out of that one into another resin so this isn't a color changing and uh, what that's done is that sort of give me a five stage what i have done it was a bit difficult to fit i bought this from finest filters is i've fitted what's called a shut off valve and what happens is so let me just show you this actually so what happens is that will come out of there i've got it disconnected at the moment it'll come up into this water container and within that water container i've got a float valve so when the float valve switches off what it will do is it'll create a back pressure to that switch and that switch shuts off the the waste and the inlet um, I put it in because I hate wasting, so the waste water would continue to run without that, and most units have those, so it's a bit of a nightmare to fit. Um, it's been a while, I think I'd struggle again if I had another one. And then what I also do, so this is what I've got here, I've got four other water containers, and I store additional water, so if we get cold weather I can bring those indoors. I keep using them from time to time, so I'm constantly changing them. And the idea is that what I'll do is I'll keep another 100 litres. So if we get a frost, I've got 100 litres, I can still do a water change. Just to sort of show you this, apologies for the fingers. Just to sort of show you this, give you an idea of, so that's the flow that I get. So it's pretty slow, a 50 gallon would be a lot slower, um, but I have decent pressure and what I'll do is I'll just get this filled up and then I'll connect it back to here so that as I use the water from here, which is my main source of water, it, it sort of opens that flow valve and it will restart everything. I do have a lid for this by the way, I, I took it off when I dropped the phone or dropped the camera. So. Um, just in case we get any mozzies and stuff in there. So I'll put the lid back on. I may end up changing this for a larger one, but as I mentioned, I am looking at potentially ways to bring that unit indoors when I have my plumbing fitted, but I'm struggling for tank storage in there, in that room. Um, I may be able to have a custom tall, thin receptacle made um, and, and get it done that way. But uh, we do have a lot of algae there, which I don't normally get. and. If I just show you, they are sort of covered by the bins. But if I do leave it out, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up creating a box over it. So just put a box over it where I can sort of open the door and change them. But uh, I'll, brace, I'll break that for now. And then when my filters come, I'll sort of go through how easy they are to sort of change and clean and do what we need to do. So while we're waiting for the filters to turn up, Let's have a look at some of the products I use. So we'll start with the Caradina. Just turn this camera. So the product that I use mainly, and this is, I do sell this, I'm not sure if I've got many left, but they are quite difficult to get for me in the UK, is uh, Salty Shrimp, Shrimp Mineral GHKH. Bought this big tub a while ago, and what I've sort of worked out is that if I put roughly um, a specific amount, follow the instructions, if I get a TDS of 150, so for my Caradina, because I've only got three tanks that are sort of harder water things, I just use a 23 litre bucket. Um, I, I'll put in the required amount of salty shrimp mineral GH, KH plus, which I'll do now. Hopefully I don't get my fingers in the way. And it's roughly a spoonful for me, uh, give or take. 
and then what I'll do with that mineral is I'll top that bucket up and I'll get that done in a second and show you but what I'll also do is I've got a floating airstone that I use so it's all tangled but what I'll do with that is I'll drop that in the bucket so and then leave it for about an hour to mix now salty shrimp jage kh plus you can mix it once the salt's dissolved you can use it straight away you don't have to leave it some people sort of pre-prepare and mix that what I also sell is smaller tubs of GH KH plus these are by Shrimps Forever. I believe Shrimps Forever, an American company. But I can get this sort of readily. Uh, they only come in the smaller tubs, but, but it's priced accordingly. And it does exactly the same as, as sh salty shrimp. The only reason I'm continuing to use salty shrimp is because I've bought a big tub of it before I sort of set this room up and I'm still using that tub. I did manage to buy a few and get a few into the UK, but got hit really bad by customs and it made it to the point where the price i was getting them at wasn't really cost effective uh, you know i had to sell them at, at, at the price i paid for them so i wasn't making a penny on those at all i actually lost money on them but um salty shrimp sorry not salty shrimp shrimps forever ghkh plus does exactly the same thing it's roughly the same doses and we sell that and we can get that regularly so the bucket in the background then is the one that I use for my caradina because most of my tanks are caradina. I keep a mix set up here. Now at the moment what I'm using is, and I use this for all my shrimp, even my tigers, is Qualdrop GH plus LC shrimp. So this is um, a GH only, so I'll add... It's a liquid, this one, it, it just instantly dissolves. But what I do in my mixes is I add the required amount of that. I add some Trace One Shrimp, which is also Qualdrop. And then I also add Rich One. Um, you know, the required doses are on the package. You can find them on the internet. And Rich One is like a humic acid, fulvic acid. Um, and it, it's sort of almost like a, a powdered tannin, I suppose. But it's got additional stuff in as well. So it's fulvic acids, amino acids, vitamins, micro elements, and whatever that bottom word says. But um, so I, I sell all these. That That's my sort of, you know, water change mix. And I mix this to between 120 and 150 TDS. So I do the other one 150 as well. And the 150 there will give me with salty shrimp anyway it will give me 6gh to 3kh i can go sort of slightly higher if i want to increase the kh and gh and it's normally 1 to 0 0.5 so for every one increase in general hardness with salty shrimp and with the shrimps forever you get half a degree carbon hardness i say 120 to 120 to 150 gives me a general hardness on the gh plus of four to five general hardness so i use the lc mainly because it's low conductivity but there's also a gh plus one um, i'd use it in exactly the same way the only difference with that is that's specifically designed for tiger species of caradina so if you're only keeping tigers then that's the one to go for there are other products on the market so we sell a few of those so this one is Shrimp GH, um, and it does the same, you know, follow the instructions. This is made by Aquavitro, which is a subsidiary of Seachem. Um, two size bottles, we sell that in. So Shrimp GH Plus, it, it, it increases the general hardness. And then we've also got Blue Wizard, which is by SL Aqua. Um, that one does pump, so it's one pump, uh, whatever it gives you. But again, follow the instructions. There's loads of other stuff on the market. I don't sell all of them. I think the other one that's used quite a bit is Salty Shrimp B. So Salty Shrimp designed for B Shrimp, so that's only a general hardness. That'll only give you a general hardness. But I thought I'd drop this bit of video in. Uh, I'll do this mix. I'll show you that mix done. Um, I'm, I've done all my um, I've done all my Caradina for this week. 
So we're just doing the Neos and the, um, the Amanos at the moment and we'll, we'll get those done and I'll sort of show you that, that going. So at the moment, um, because the water's outside, I am actually bucketing stuff in and it takes a lot out of me with my back problems. Hence me wanting to bring it indoors and just make things a little bit easier. If I do end up leaving it outdoors, I'll, I'll have to work out a pump system where I can sort of pump it from outside into these receptacles uh, rather than just carrying buckets because they absolutely destroy me at the moment. If I can do them and if I'm struggling, my son often helps me, as you, as you guys are aware. So let's get uh, let's get let's get this filled up, and then we'll go through what I do with that one to top those tanks up. You guys already know what I do with that one, but I want to show you this one as well. So as you can see here, I'm using that receptacle. Uh, it has got a tap on the bottom. I'm, I'm moving buckets at the moment, and I'm not too bad today. I'm able to. It hasn't been very long since I showed you the dripping of the output and that's sort of what we've collected. So probably 40 minutes we've got, it tells you actually there, what, three or four litres. So I'll probably take the rest of the day to fill that up and then I'll connect it back to here because I'm obviously taking water out. But uh, buckets at the moment need to find a way of getting that into the, into the shrimp room a bit easier. And can't you tell it's autumn? We get loads of leaves down our driveway. So now that that's full, I've dropped in the airline. I've pumped it up a little bit. And the purpose of that is just to get it mixing. One of the questions I may get in the comments is, why do I put the salt in first? And it's just over the years, what I've found is if you put the salt in the bottom to start with, when and you're using buckets as I am currently, when you pour the buckets of water into the bigger bucket, you dissolve the salts, it breaks them up, it flushes them up off the bottom. You might get the odd bit that sticks, but what I do now is I'll sort of, I don't put anything else in that. I don't put any prime, I don't put any water, uh, you know, dechlorinators or anything like that. I'll literally just use the, the, the salty shrimp or the shrimp mineral from Shrimps Forever and I'll let that sort of run for 30 minutes to an hour and then what I'll do is I'll test that. I want, I'm looking for a TDS of 150 out of that. You know, 150, 160, it's going to give me six or just above six gem hardness and three carbonate hardness. And if it's low, I'll, I'll add more salt uh, gradually and let it mix again. And you'll notice I've left a bit of a gap at the top of the bucket and that's because if it's high, although I wouldn't mind if it's high, but if it's high, I can add a bit more water to sort of dilute that down, hence hence me leaving some RO water there in that bucket. But what we'll do is we'll get that done. Um, I need to drain 10% or more out of my three Neo tanks. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll sort of top those up and I'll show you how I do those. So it's pretty similar to what I'm doing here at the moment. So I've got a pump in here, I use a different pump for that, that's connected to a float valve that I connect to the side of the tank, adjust the flow and just let it top up. Once it's topped up, it will auto shut off. I'll probably continue to do that on my Neo tanks for the immediate future. But if you're a, a channel follower, you'll know that I'm looking to get all of my racks set up with a single point of top up. Now obviously this rack, because I've got Neo Caradina and Caradina on here, I'd have to set up two of those top ups. So I'd need to do one to top up the Caradina tanks and one to top up the Neo Caradina tanks. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that for the sake of three Neo tanks. If I ended up sort of putting a fourth in where I've got sort of half the tank is, half the rack is Neo and half it's Caradina, I may do, but we'll have to see. I'm all about making life as easy as possible, so I probably will end up doing that at some point. So let's get this, um, let's get this mixed. Um, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea, give it sort of 30, 40 minutes, and then what I'll do is we'll come back, we'll test the TDS. Hopefully it's where I want it. I'll adjust accordingly and I'll show you what I do for the Neos to top those up. And it is slightly different to the Caradina. Got the TDS pen. Let's give that a bit of a run. So I'm getting sort of 158, 159 out of that. And 
I know that's going to be sort of 150 because as we mentioned I'm currently getting about 7 7.5 TDS directly out of my RO unit which is why it needs the resins changed and stuff and the process so I'm happy with that that's going to give me the, the sort of 5 GH that the 6 GH that I want so the process is pretty similar to what I'm doing with the other one I've got a different type of pump reverse osmosis fittings it's uh, it's got a good max head height on this pump I've taken out the required amount of water so if we're looking in there that's about four and a half five liters so that's the water I've taken out and the only real difference is the, the change in parameters in my opinion for neos they're a lot more tolerant of a water change you know you know a change in water parameters not massively but but it's still relatively slow and the, so the only real difference is with my caradina i drip back in a bit slower with my neos as you can see from the tap the taps fully open so it is still slow it would still class as a as a, as a drip but it's just a heavy drip so if we get that plugged in I'll sort of show you guys what that flow looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Let's pull that out a second. So that's sort of the flow that we get out of that. So it's not drip, but it's not fast either. You know, I'm not pouring in buckets of water or jugs of water. Uh, it just tops up quicker and it's more of a time saver for me. So I use this method for ages, don't really have a problem with it. I think if I was taking a lot more water out, I would put it in slowly, but 10 to 15%, four litres out of a 45, 50 litre tank, you know, four or five litres is, is, is nothing. And and I'm I'm happy to put that in at that speed. And the reason I take sort of that four and a half, five litres out is because I can do it with one bucket on the three tanks. If I had loads of neo tanks i'd probably have a bin like that that i'd use i probably wouldn't do any different and the other thing with this pump that i've got in there is it's it leaves water at the bottom it doesn't drain it right down this pump here which is a ch ultra zero look at the design of that sorry i'm not showing you that that actually empties the bin you know it's called a it's called a zero for a reason and the reason it's called a zero is because it takes the the, the container down to zero so i'll um i'll leave that sort of mixing as well while i'm getting it agitated and once it's finished i'll wipe down that pipe give it a swill in some clean water and i'll drop it back into this bin I haven't added to this bin yet but this bin's pretty easy to add to all i do is because i use the liquids the liquids i either measure them or if i just show you the lid if i can get it open with one hand all these come with um, a syringe a measuring syringe and the top of that bottle you can literally just plug in the syringe so let me show you that i'm doing this with one hand guys so apologies so it comes with a measuring syringe you know if it's five mil per whatever liters to give you the results you simply put that in the top of the bottle let me so you simply put that in the top of the bottle invert the bottle so you've got obviously liquid and then pull pull the plunger down to where you want that to go to and and put it in your mix obviously it's stirred it's it doesn't need dissolving it's already dissolved it's a liquid it just needs agitating but that's um that's sort of where what we do and how we do stuff and you know why i think reverse osmosis water is so important and i'll cut this bit there i'm gonna do these these top-ups and then that's all my tanks done for the week and um as, as i mentioned earlier we should get the rest of the filters appear to do my maintenance on the ro unit and we'll we'll get that filmed and get that video for you guys one last product i use then as part of my weekly water change routine or my water change routine is this by hobby so it's a glass cleaner you can use it for terrariums or aquariums 
it's called uh, it's called aqua clean i do stock it i haven't got any in stock at the moment and how i use it i don't spray it directly onto the tanks because i've got sort of open top tanks or semi-open top tanks i literally just spray it onto some kitchen roll give the front glasses a wipe so it's more difficult with one hand let me swap hands and apologies again for the fingers and literally just wipe them over and what that will do that will remove any watermarks and stuff and top it up as I need to and it's just sort of part of my water change routine and I'll give that another spray and I'll go around and do the other so it's by hobby it's called Reptix TerraClean Reptix AquaClean it's the same product and it is literally just a spray what I do like about it is you can and if you can see that you can lock it by flipping that little nozzle there or that little clip so you can sort of put it up and spin it and it, and it locks in place i can't do it in one hand but so uh, you lock it and it stops you doing that but spray it on the thing i so i don't like to over the tanks but i believe it's safe i just don't trust it and then give those tanks just a bit of a wipe over just to clean those front glasses i'll get loads of water marks it's just a messy just giving them a bit of a wipe over just to clean those so. okay cool um anyone want to know what the stickers are the sl aqua ones and i do have a couple but not many if you buy any sl aqua products just put a note on your order and i'll drop i'll drop a sticker or or two in that's the other one so i don't have many left but um if you're lucky enough to order from me an sl aqua product so you, you you just put a note on it just to remind me and I'll, I'll drop some stickers in speak to you when i get the filters our parcel finally arrived so i'm a big bog by fan so we've bought five of the carbon blocks and mine are 10 inch filters from finest filters and they do need flushing i'll go through that with you but suitable for all standard 10 inch filter housings and the the same with the sediment filters so i i buy five micron you can get a three micron as well i believe but they are just like a, a sponge so what we'll do is we'll nip outside we'll get these changed so because i use the auto shut off valve the system works on pressure so i need to turn the the, the tap off the, the feed tap and then just release the pressure by lifting the ball valve a little bit but i'll get that done and we'll get those off feed taps off and I just need to you can see that just need to drop the ball valve just to relieve the backed up pressure in there Head back on and then what we'll do is we'll pull this bin out which is a bit tight And I'm just going to start with that first filter. So with these ones, what I like about them is they literally just unscrew off. You have to watch it and drop them. There we go. This one hasn't been in so long and it's not as bad as the one I had previously, but if I just quickly, I don't know if I'm going to get this out, quickly sort of roll that on the bin. You can see the fine sands and stuff there that that's took out. That's probably a better, better view of that. So hence they need changing and they're not expensive. Um, the carbon blocks and the, the filters aren't expensive. What I have got though is I've got algae in the housing itself so what I'll do I'll go and clean that out I'll put the new filter in and what I like to do is with the seal make sure the seals clean and possibly give that a little light coating of Vaseline just put a bit of Vaseline on run it through my fingers so let's get that done so new filter in we've cleaned the housing we're just going to screw that back on cleaned and serviced the seal 
and the key thing to remember here is make sure that that hole lines up at the top you can get a spanner to put these on and off with but i tend not to use them i just hand tighten them and they seem to work let's get this on and we'll repeat that process with the carbon block same process with the carbon block it is worth mentioning that with the threads so if we just look up there with those threads it is worth wiping those over with a cloth because they do get grit and it will affect your seal carbon filter same process carbon filter does have seals on the top here so i was just reading this it says that typically used after a sediment filter and uh, service life approximately six months which i've probably done five or two and a half thousand gallons roughly so they do they do last quite a while you know i bought a pack of five relatively cheap so they should last me a couple of years really but let's get this one on and then we'll go and do the resin chambers i've also used this opportunity to give this a swirl with a hose pipe and i've lifted the filter out of its block the ro membrane i've lifted that out of its block and i've give the the underneath a bit of a, a clean down and notice that i've got both of these screwed to the wall and the idea is that i can quickly just release them so they're not screwed tight they just lift off but uh, let's have a look at the other filter then so the other filter is the resin i'm just trying to make sure this doesn't fall but the other filter is the resin and this sits inside some inner chambers I'll give these a clean but the idea of these is there's a foam sponge either end and the resin itself so I'll buy the resin loose and what I'm going to, the top comes off this so what I'm going to do is empty that out into the bin I'll get rid of the rubbish uh, the, the the resin uh, you know uh, put it in a bag and put it in the bin wash the sponges out and then I'll fill these up and clean this out and we'll put that back and repeat that on the second stage so let's get that done so the resin chamber's filled with colour changing resin and put back on. Haven't done this one yet, but I'll finish there because it's a repeat process of that. What I do want to say, because we've put a carbon block in, it's potentially got dust. So on every unit you should see a tap. And the idea of the tap is the taps are flush. So what will happen, instead of it going through the resin membrane, if you open that tap it goes out of the drain and you just flush for a few minutes you know just run it for a few minutes just to flush that carbon block out and because that's before the membrane it doesn't affect the resins because they come after the membrane so when i've finished i'll put i'll switch that tap off turn the main feed in just run that for a few minutes so the water runs clear out the drain and then i'll flip that back over and it'll fill up the resin chambers i may get a bit of video of that but i think we've got enough